Um, well, it was well, it was pretty strange. Uh, obviously, the pandemic was like the major reason. Um, the plan was to have the record finished uh, by spring and then be on the road touring you know, in summer of 2020. But uh, when everything kind of went into lockdown, we really had to reassess our plans because we weren't able to be in the same room together. And and uh, we ended up making the record in you know small chunks uh, over few months here a few months here and then we go into lockdown again and and then we'd start up again so it was kind of like an on and off process for the last uh, year and a half it's uh, when we're normally making a record uh, we'll kind of have a deadline date so we'll 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 record the record over four you know four months or so um, working every day as opposed to you know with with the pandemic it, some it, sometimes we'd work for a month and then we we go into lockdown again so we were you know nervous to be in the same room together <laughs> type thing because it's a very small room our control room at the studio so uh, uh during this record i would i would record just me and ben recording his his vocals i would be recording his vocals and uh i recorded my own background vocals um and then when we're doing guitars it would just be me and one engineer in the room for several months at a time um so you know doing this on and off process as well my um uh over the last like i guess it would be yeah it's been two years um and as well my my mother passed away in may of last year sadly uh so i i needed uh, to take uh, several months off after that to uh, just to spend with family and uh, and uh, yeah, so it was a trying, long, kind of difficult process to make this record. But uh, I'm just so happy it's finally done and people get to hear it. Oh, out of the ones I've produced, yes, uh, it'll, it'll be the third that I've fully produced, and uh, the sec uh, BT2 I co-produced with Gavin Brown. Um, it, it's just you know I, I um, I'm the main songwriter in the band, so I kind of have a kind of clear image of, or vision of what the song sounds like in my head. So over the years, learning from um, other producers like Gavin and uh, Brennan O'Brien, uh, you really take in things and you learn how, how to do things. Uh, it, for me, it was more so the technical side and, and, um, and getting sounds and stuff I'm pretty familiar with already. But um, it, it just made sense for me to produce these albums because we have our own studio and uh, we can work whenever we want. And, and I, I already have an idea of, of what the sound, song should sound like finished. So I want to get as close to that goal as possible. And uh, this record is a good example of that. Like it's, I, I usually demo everything uh, before. All the songs are demoed before we go into the studio. So going to the studio for me is just making everything sound uh, sonically the best you can make it sound and getting the best performances out of the other guys in the band and myself. Um, probably out of all the songs, I think uh, The Wolf would, would have been difficult to produce. We had an uh, orchestra on that one and uh, the song itself wasn't, wasn't uh, very difficult to record. Um, I did program a lot of like drum stuff on that song, and um, but to record the orchestra was uh, really interesting because we had uh, David Campbell do the arrangement on that, and he's uh, this amazing arranger and conductor from LA that uh, um, he's done Metallica and, and a lot of uh, big bands. Um, so he conducted an orchestra in Nashville who we were recording their parts in Nashville at a studio while I was in Toronto, so it was all done remotely, and I, I thought it was going to be a difficult process, but it was actually not that difficult. It was, uh, you know, to record remotely during the pandemic. It, we were all on the same monitor, and I could hear them recording and doing every take, and and David conducting them and giving them directions. So it was a pretty neat process. And then for you was uh, probably the most guitars on one song in the album was for you. So there's like. Acoustic guitars, 12 string guitars, uh, and all sorts of electric guitars. It was just a lot of guitars and uh, synthesizers too on that song that are kind of tucked in the background, but that was that was a hard song to record. Um, mine would have to be End of Me, which is our current single. It's uh, 
it, it, it just to me it sounds like amazing because I you know the guitars were are really big and full and it reminds me of songs from the 90s and, and recordings from the 90s um, that was a really really fun one to record and to have Rivers Como on it it's just like he's one of our my favorite songwriters We, uh, it was actually Ben's suggestion uh, uh, when I'd written this song. It was it was uh, me playing the intro riff, which sounded like Hendrix, and then the other part sounded like Weezer. So for the longest time, I was calling Hendrix. I was calling it Hendrix plus Weezer. Um, and when Ben heard it, he was like, "Wow, we should get Rivers Como to sing on it." Um, if Jimi Hendrix was alive, I'd want him to play guitar on it too. <laughs> but. Uh, um, he, uh, we sent him the track, like the song was finished and done, and then uh, finally uh, we sent him the track uh, when we were just doing masters, and he loved it, and uh, uh, we heard back from him about a month later, he sent uh, his vocal tracks to us, and, and that happened uh, just through our management, uh, like we didn't know him personally or anything, but uh, we were beyond thrilled to have him part of one of our songs, you know, we've never done it before, either. <laughs> no, I think the the pandemic is the crisis of faith right now. Uh, a few years ago, the crisis of faith was uh, this rise of nationalism in the world, um, and that's still there too. So I, the, the title Crisis of Faith was more of a commentary on where we are in, in the world right now. Everything from the cr uh, climate crisis to this, uh, like I said before, the rise of nationalism and and uh, now this pandemic, uh, yeah, it's really, you know, it, we all have to work together and, uh, and a crisis of faith in humanity is kind of what we're alluring to because people seem to keep wanting to make the wrong choices. Um, but uh, the record, musically, it's kind of all over the place. It kind of showcases a lot of our different influences and, and uh, we're trying new things. A song like Forgiveness is, is more influenced by the prog Prague bands we were listening to when we were growing up, uh, bands like Rush, um, uh, and then uh, you have a song like For You, which is is more of a, uh, almost has a poppy feel to it and uh, has acoustic guitars on it, but it's still a rock song. So, and then you have your classic Philly talent sounding song like Reckless Paradise. Um, so it, it is, a, it, you know, it's a, a collection of, uh, you know, some of the best songs I think we've written over the last few years. and and. Uh, it really kind of runs the whole emotional gambit and uh, covers a lot of territory. For <laughs> yeah, for I was gonna say for most of 2020, it was uh, it was uh, recording this album. Um, but when I wasn't, I was spending a lot of time with my family, my dad and uh, my brother and his family and. Uh, those are times you you don't get as a, a person that plays in a band and, and tours incessantly. You don't get a lot of time at home to spend with uh, your your uh, your family. So that was uh, probably the biggest thing I did was just spending a lot of time with my dad. It's uh, <laughs> it's a, a, a sad musician. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I know a lot of bands that, uh, you know, this was really hard on them and uh, a lot of artists not being able to tour. I mean, some people do this, people do this for a living and, and people do this for, for um, you know, for good mental health as well. And to not be able to do that is the hard part, but uh, we're, we're, we're keeping it together. Like we get together all the time, our band, and, and we're planning our tours for next year and, and we're, we're so excited to play in front of people again. I would say Jimi Hendrix because he he uh, he he was kind of like the innovator and inventor of a lot of the stylings that went on from from his the point where he came out. Yeah, for sure, Jimi Hendrix. Well, we're we're planning on uh, we start touring again in uh, February. We finally get to do our first tour in, in over I guess it's been three or four years now um, across Canada. And we're touring with our good friends Rise Against and uh, also Pop and Nobro, um, two other great Canadian bands. So that, that, that'll kind of whet our appetite for touring again and we're so excited to play. And then we're, we'll be coming to the UK and, uh, and we'll see you in Rock and Ring and Rock and Park this summer, yeah. 
Rock Buddies. Rock Buddies. Billy Talent is so, so excited to play for you all again. Um, I know it's been a long time, um, but we miss you and we love you and we want to we wanna be able to perform and, and be in Germany again to see our friends. So um, just stay safe and stay well and, uh, and keep, keep thinking uh, positive and, and this, this will hopefully uh, end. I don't know if it's ever going to end, but uh, this pandemic is, uh, it will get better and we will be able to play shows and enjoy music and laugh together again. We <laughs> we haven't really we've talked about it, but we haven't planned anything yet. But it's pretty crazy. Yeah, thirty years because we stand. We started this band in uh, a suburb of Toronto in 1993. The four of us in my parents' basement, all going to the same high school. Bunch of you know just dumb kids that love punk rock music, and uh, we're still here. And that's that's a really special thing. So 30th anniversary, we have to do something special. Rockland Radio. Bester Rock and Pop.